Welcome to part one of how to facet a gemstone with the Gembot automated faceting machine. So I've been tasked to do a test cut of a round barrel. barrel. So I'm first step is to find some rough material. This is some uh, emeralds, some nice big aquamarine. Just going through my collection to see what I have. See what would cut well. Some of the stuff is better left in specimen form. Might be able to get a few stones out of this big aquamarine. It's got a nice blue color, deep blue color. But I've always had my eye on this Aquador right here. Some more aquamarine preform. There's the Aquador. It's got a really cool and clear helidor on top of aquamarine. Just checking it out in the sun. So yeah, I've decided to cut this one. It's got a really clear terminated top. So I'm going to use that as the table of my stone. Gotta figure out how you want to cut it, what orientation, some side inclusions in the helidor top. So I should be able to get rid of those by rounding it out. Just checking out the inclusions a little closer. So the pavilion is going to be blue, aquamarine, and the top crown part is going to be gold and yellow Heliodor. I think it's going to look really nice. It might even come out green with the two colors mixing. We'll see after we cut it. But you don't see much of this material out there. And it's pretty expensive if you do. So this is going to be an awesome stone to cut. And I think it'll be Better as a cut stone than just a crystal specimen. Some people might get mad for me cutting it. It's such a rare specimen. But I think it'll look better. Someone will be able to make it into a piece of jewelry, or I will be able to make it into a piece of nice jewelry. So you can see the edges there. There's some matrix material or some mud crystal grew in. Should be able to remove all that. Doesn't go too deep into the stone, it's just on the exterior. I might be able to get away with leaving the the table and the crown. Might be able to not have to polish. Might be able to just leave it terminated. We'll see though once we get cutting on it. Every stone's different. Every cut's different. So I'm probably going to cut this down the middle. Leave some room to cut the pavilion. Ooh. 
we go. Cutting the stone on my little saw. Usually you want to use water, but my saw, it's not a water saw. So I just go slow, make sure it doesn't get hot. This is a sped up video. Took me a few minutes to get through it. There it is, cut in half. Now I'll be able to dop this up. It's cool how the heliodor is kind of in the middle there. Aquamarine slider. It's going to end up, I think, being a round stone. Yeah, that's what they wanted me to cut. So I'm going to find a round design. first few steps finding a rough material getting an idea for what shape you want to cut and then finding a design you want to look at that cool fade going on goes from like gold to clear to light blue to a darker blue try to preserve all that when I'm cutting it I think it's gonna make an awesome stone got a really good deal on this pretty rare crystal I got it for a hundred dollars seen them in the thousands up into the thousand dollar range depending on the size a little bit bigger than this be a thousand but the clarity on top is really good so using my transfer pad it's kind of a jig I made to keep the stone as center as possible I know the stone isn't round but it just gonna try my best to keep everything as center as possible. And that super glue is coming out extra drippy. I got a little on my fingers and a little on the side there, but it should be alright. And I think the dop stick here was there was some still some glue on the back side of it. Not the top side where I'm gluing the stone, but the back side, so it's a little bit rough to get out of there. But I was able to get the stone secured to you the dop stick. So this would be probably step three. So finding a rough material, figuring out a shape you want to cut, cutting your material down to size so you don't have to grind all that material away, and then dopping your stone. So four, step four. See this little stick there, but got it out, stayed centered. For this cut, I'm not going to a precise uh, size, so I'm just going to do a round preform on it, and make sure it's round on the dop stick. Get all those side inclusions kind of out of there for the girdle. Just adding glue, got some on my fingers. You could use wax. I like to use this cheap super glue. It works very well. There's some nice super glue out there where you uh, add some hardener to it and it hardens up pretty much instantly. But this super glue I let sit overnight. And then I add a little more. Oh, look at that green line. You want to have your dop sticks smaller than what you're going to cut your stone to. I'm not going to make this stone much smaller. I'm just going to round it. I should do a hexagon cut or octagon cut on it. But I'm going to do a round on it.
And then next we're going to go on the internet and find the relative index, or refractive index, sorry. That's just the angle you should cut at. So this has a 1.57 to 1.59. I'm going to go to the Merlin's Gembot website, go to Designs, and have all the shapes that are available to cut preloaded into the Gembot. I'm including shapes that have a length of 1 to 1, length and width of 1 to 1 for free, just to keep things simple for now and then in the future I'm going to be adding the leftover shapes and designs as a package that can be purchased. I haven't decided on a price. It's going to be pretty cheap though. Really I just need more time to add designs. It's a lot to add them. I have to copy over each design, put in an algorithm, so we're going to go to the round design. I'm just showing off all the shapes that are available. We're going to go to the round. And then we're going to look at each design. And find the refractive index for bar barrel. Barrel, 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 barrel. So most of these are 1.54 RI, which will probably be alright to use, but I want to find something as close to the number we found for barrel. I think there's only like one or two I have on here that are exactly perfect match. I think if you stay lower, lower of an angle, it's alright. That will uh, give you the optimal refraction of light within the stone, just on the material. I think the magic number is 42 degrees. You don't want to cut your pavilion less than 42 degrees. It also creates windows. You see through the stone pretty much. The light doesn't reflect back up into the crown and the table. There's a whole science behind that. I won't go too much into detail on that, but you can do that research for yourself. So this is step five, finding your shape. And design five and six, five and six. So many designs I want to cut. So many cool designs. And I think the Gembot will do, or I know the Gembot does very well with cutting stones with a lot of facets on them. It would be pretty tedious to do by hand and if you mess up if you go back through just a lot of time if you mess up gem lot it's precise it goes to each specific location every time that it needs to go to There's no human error involved So I think we're getting close to finding the design. Just double checking short term memory. I don't know how clear you can see that in the video, but I think we found one. The Triumph and the Triumph A is what we're going to be using for our design. It looks pretty cool. Not too difficult. 
we'll be able to get through it pretty quickly. So we found our design. Stay tuned for part two of this video. I'm going to go a little bit. I'm going to show the design. And I think I'm going to stop the video and get the cutting on the stone today. And I'll put together the rest of the video. Do it in separate parts. And then I'll make a one whole long video at the end. You know why I'm taking so long over. Oh, I think I was trying to look at the difference between the Triumph and the Triumph A. But the Triumph looks good. Just checking out all the facets that are going to be cut. Looking at what's going to be done. So I'm looking at the girdle. You could either cut each facet or you could just leave it round. I'll probably cut the facets in. Yeah, you can see in that lower picture. Probably looks better with the cut in. The side view. It's going to be a cool stone. It's got a cool pavilion on it. It doesn't look too difficult. You probably won't be able to see through it to it. But we'll see how it turns out. Alright, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for part two. How to cut a gemstone with Jimbot. Thank you. Have a good day.